have we been waiting? Why have we been wondering when it will be the right time, when our life is in a certain amount of balance, when we have the permission, the resources, the timing? This is a call for you to realize the time to step up is now. The time to serve, the time to change, the time to learn, the time to grow, the time to shift. It's so easy to wait for a certain signal, a certain stage, a certain amount of resources, a certain amount of stability. Every day you see the world in a way where you feel it is out of balance, in just moving in the wrong direction, and you know deep down or up front you have something to do about it, and you don't, you let yourself and you let the world down. This doesn't mean you need to make a radical shift, unless intuitively for you it does. What this means is you need to be real with yourself. You've learned the lessons you've learned. You can always learn more. You've grown in so many ways. You can always grow more. The political machines, the development of AI and cybernetics and dehumanization, the addiction culture, the depression culture, the big pharma culture, the continuous loop of all the things that you know are not in alignment with the world of harmony and prosperity and goodness and love and innovation and creativity. The work you're here to do against those things, to transform those things, to bring about your version of the golden age, to bring about all the things you want to celebrate, you want to be celebrated for, all the experiences you want to have and support others to have that are positive, that are birthing the world that you know in your heart is possible. Every moment you have the possibility, the choice to do those things. You know, today I went to an excellent tea ceremony and I was planning on going to a networking event, but I'm going to be moving soon. And I thought, you know, this tea ceremony is being put on by somebody I, uh, who would be the landlord and who I might work with. And I'd like to get to know this person better. And to be honest, for my mind, the ceremony was kind of boring. It was people sitting in silence, drinking tea. And so I'm like, I'm going to get in some of my daily meditation time. I'm, I'm aiming for like a third. Um, I aim for a third of my daily hour and a half, two hours. And I just blissed out. It was great. And then my body started to cramp. And so I brought in energy and I thought I'll, I'll do the Zen thing and not worry about my, how my body is cramping. And I, I got all these high vibes, all these visions of these things I want to manifest, all these inspired next actions for elevating, um, life, quality of life, way I can make a contribution, career, finances, contributions to a higher level. And coming out of it, it felt really great. But as I, as I was headed home, I started to feel this panic, this anxiety. And as I was walking my dog, I felt it even more. And I remembered what Dr. Joe Dispenza said, that birthing a new self involves death of an old self. And I realized that purposefully allowing soul to come through meant that the old body, the old nervous system, the old neurotransmitter cycle of, oh, it doesn't feel safe, so play some games, do some breathing, get an extra bit of sleep, wait until it feels right, don't make a charged video today, don't go through the whole cycle of showing up and creating a way for energy to flow between you and others so you can serve and they can serve and things can spiral upward. I realized I, my body wanted to, um, kind of shut down. My mind was torn between wanting to permission that is an escape and just rise up and take the inspiration I had during that meditation to just make and post one video tonight. And, you know, this is what my soul wanted to do to dance. And for so long, I've had this vision of somebody who makes spiritual content having to show up as perfect. And, you know, 
friends, acquaintances, <laughs> followers, peoples, haters, everyone. If there's anything I've learned in the last few years, it's perfection is both an infinite continuum and a delusion. <laughs> it is a choice and it is something we can be at any moment and never ever reach. You know, we learn through successes and we learn through mistakes. And I have made some huge mistakes that I look forward to fixing and amending. And I've had some huge victories and I helped other people have some huge victories in turn. And the only way we can create change is to show up in our best selves in this moment. No matter what you did wrong today, yesterday, last week, last month, last year, last decade, no matter what you might judge yourself for, shame yourself for, feel guilty about, choose to view yourself as having showed up as less than, in this moment, in this hour, in this day, in this week, month, and year, you can show up as that greater version of yourself. That version you have in your mind, that version people saw in you anytime they wrote you a recommendation, a testimonial, um, a positive review, gave you a sincere, genuine compliment anytime anyone saw the best in you, is a reminder to see the best in yourself. And if you want to live and show up as your best, it is a conscious choice. It is embracing the discomfort of allowing bits of that old self to die so that new self can show up and shine. Yeah, um, fellow David, mistakes do pave the way to perfection. And while I don't think we want to consciously jump into making a mistake, we have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive others if we want forgiveness to be part of the world. Any big conflicts we see in the world where there's anger energy, where there's retribution, revenge, um, scathing hatred, violence, um, all that stuff, you know, from my recent post about holographic reality and the several years old pinned post on my profile on Facebook as I record this, we are all one. In the mystical sense, in the collective consciousness sense, in the high level physics sense, even in the material reductionist sense, there's ways of linking things together. But taking the mystical and the high physics sense of really what reality truly is, if you hold conflict within you, if you allow conflict to be created and hate and anger to drive you, you will see that in the world. Now, there's a lot of ways of interpreting this, and I'll leave it up to you and your state of awareness and your conception of reality to decide how that shows up and what it means. But I want you, if you're watching this, then you're giving me some permission to say these things. Uh, obviously, edit your interpretation as you see fit. But I, I want you to really, really be real with yourself about the contribution you can make to the world, about the positive ways you can impact the world in a real and concrete way, not just in your mind. We incarnated into bodies to take part in this 3D world. And we could look at the past if we feel that's necessary and beneficial, or we can look to the future we want to build and create. And aside from understanding how we might, might want to act differently, in this moment, you can connect with your soul. You can connect with your higher self. And all the guidance needed, transcending time and space, is there. You know, there's techniques of focusing on your higher chakras. There's techniques of focusing on your guides or your connection with the divine, however you define that. Going over the past, going over mistakes, going over failures, going over other people's stuff of those reinforces those things. Any time we hold a vision, we think about something, we fuel that thing. And generally, if it's something related to the past or negative emotion, it doesn't drive us forward. You know, sure, there can always be exception. There can always be exceptions. Sure, there can always be contrast. But I watched a fantastic documentary on Diana Nyad, um, played by the extraordinary Annette Benning, 
um, supported by the fabulous Jodie Foster. This is a woman, spoiler alert, um, who at 62 decided to swim a 103 mile voyage from Cuba to Florida. She failed when she was 28 and the movie, the documentary, the, the recent one, there's one with the real people in 2013, but the recent one shows her journey, her struggles, her failures, her successes. And not a full spoiler of it, but it is so inspiring to see her focusing on her goal, on the meaning, the purpose, the adventure, and not allowing her age, not allowing her gender, not allowing any elements of the past or other people who might have seemed more able-bodied or more financially resourced to cloud her sense of vision and a sense of purpose. And during one of the scenes, somebody close to her shared some extreme doubts on her ability to succeed in swimming, this marathon swim, 72 hour swim. And there was a goal that she failed. She heard that doubting message. It galvanized her. She's like, F them, F that. And then she tried that new goal again and she succeeded. And then she confronted that person. That person's like, yeah, I was lying to you, but it worked. They're not to encourage lying or deceit, but there's a difference in focusing in contrast, like negative emotions portrayed in short bursts of fiction versus seeking out things like darkness or hatred or anger or negativity. And if there's one thing I've learned from some of my mistakes and failures in life, it's realizing that seeing darkness outside of us, experimenting with exposure to fiction can give us all we need for that galvanizing contrast, that we don't need to let ourselves live in lack, in fear, in conflict, in anger, in limitation, in limiting belief, in any of those things. If those are galvanizing in some way, there are book chapters, there are mock conversations, there are trusted friends who you know if they play a temporary mind game with you for your own good, you trust them to know you well enough to hopefully do it in the right way as is shown in that movie. But I'm saying all this because you need to find your alchemy for bringing about your greatest self. Now I plan to launch a workshop series. I plan to relaunch my coaching integrating spirituality and business. I plan to do a lot of stuff to help people be their best and rise up, whether it's developing spiritual and intuitive skills, whether it's refining and improving their business skills, whether it's getting ready to fundraise and going on the path of fundraising through an excellent group I recently got connected with, whether it's just sharing some ideas or whether it's introducing them to somebody else, any of those things. I am grateful to show up and serve and offer in these ways because part of my gifts are helping others strengthen theirs. I have some very specific things I'm doing in this world that are amplifiers of that. In my first published book, Magic is Real, I talk about building temples. I talk about helping to co-found a city. And those are some very big concrete things beyond what could be reduced to a, a service business. and a social media uh, collection of accounts. And I want you to look within yourself and see how, how can you live the purpose you feel is highest and truest to you. Maybe it feels galvanizing. Maybe you have what I have is memories of before you incarnated in this body, in this life, in this timeline, and it's clear to you and it's charged to you. And just like you could have something scheduled tomorrow from 2 to 4 p.m. And that's your attention and that's your goal. And you're going to do everything you can to focus, get in a peak state and get it done. For me, that's what this life is about. Not a two-hour chunk, but a X number of hopefully many, not hopefully, many, many decades of stuff, of time, of activity. And if you don't know your purpose, I, YouTube videos, other people can help you find it and align to it. 
Some people have very specific purposes, uh, like a smart goal system or a succinct sentence or two. Others have very vague and general purposes, and that works for them. While I feel having a specific purpose helps you measure your progress in that purpose and know if it's actually getting done, for some people, their purpose could be living a certain way, being the best mom, the best dad, the best lover, the best gardener ever. And that's their soul's expression. For others, it could be liberating people from poverty or uh, planting a million trees, etc. But when you're real with yourself, when you're seeing how your entire life can play into living this thing that galvanizes you, that inspires you, that fills you with more joy and fulfillment than any form of entertainment, any form of distraction, any form of general sensual pleasure, unless you know that happens to be part of your purpose as part of a healing journey or a way to liberate others or anything else that is um, you know, really a motive for helping raise the, the vibe of consciousness in humanity. When you think about why you came here and what you can do and the impact you can make in the world, you can see how you are a piece of the puzzle for elevating the consciousness across the world, elevating our standard of living, elevating our perceptions of what is true, what is good, what can be created, what can be built, what can be shared, what can be alive. You know, we're in a decade and a century where there are major inflection points with technology. And I've heard it said so many times that technology moves faster than human psychology and we're shifting to a reactive culture. And pretty soon, this is on Joe Rogan recently with Ray Kurzweil, uh, they, they both think it's inevitable that we're going to need to become cyborgs to remain competitive. And they had different reasons for that. And a lot of people think that will destroy our humanity um, in some ways, myself included. Others feel that could enhance us. Other feels, others feel we're servants to a type of uh, techno-consciousness. But I believe we can catch up. I believe there are unique skills to intact humans that only we have and only we have access to. That our brains, that our souls can do so much with what mainstream science calls dark matter and dark energy. That just means they're undefined. I do believe that chakras and souls and angels and the divine and a lot of other stuff in those categories are in those lumps of dark matter and dark energy. And those of us who have been practicing higher level mystical and spiritual exercises know truth. You know, you know a truth by experience. It doesn't have to be a repeated $2 billion laboratory study replicated thousands of times. Those studies are great for certain purposes and they are not always feasible. And sometimes if you want to know a truth, you know what you can trust, you know what you can rely on. There could be a chance you could be wrong, but often you know in your heart when you're right. And even if you're only right for that phase of life, you hold on to that. You live with that. You live according to that. So look at the world. Think about the movies, the books, the people, the examples that have really galvanized you about a way to change the course of human civilization, our story, our culture's story, our nation's story. And think about all the things you've seen and heard and felt and known and experienced related to technology, related to politics, where you felt a certain charge. That charge is not meant to be temporary. That charge is not meant to be just some reactive emotion, you're meant to meditate away. Unless again, that's, that's your path. That charge is part of the contrast therapy of an existence, of, of duality related to consciousness, related to why we created the world the way it is, related to why we incarnated at this point in time the way things are. So right now, I want to give you an exercise whether you do this live or if you're watching a replay, you hit pause. I want you to get in a space where you can write long form because that is a way to involve the brain more. If you're charged and it's impossible, then go ahead and type. Um, but long form, you avoid distractions. If you're typing, I want you to 
do your best to consider turning any type of notification or distraction from your device uh, temporarily off. And don't look at anything unless it is literally, truly, critically urgent. And I want you to write down, without the filter of your mind, your soul's purpose. If you have a sensory awareness and a conscious awareness of the space around you, focus about a foot and a half above your head. Depending on your map, that could be the crown or eighth or ninth chakra. That is where soul enters body for most of us. That is where our astral cord goes. If you want to feel the difference between the voice of your soul and the voice of your mind clearly and geometrically, you could focus there. And the voice of your soul is still and consistent. The voice of your mind can be frantic and inconsistent. It often argues with itself. The voice of your body, you can usually tell. And if you develop awareness and practice, you can usually feel where an inner voice is coming from. You can usually ask it who and what it is. And when you have stillness, when you have knowing, when you have the same thing repeated, when you feel a trueness within you, that is more likely the voice of soul. And there's no judgment in this exercise. I want you to write down, my purpose is, and other David, you wrote, enjoying life through the careful study of the mechanics of the universe. I love it. Aho, tic-tac-toe. Now, as you write down your purpose, getting it to a sentence is good. If it's more than that, fine. I want you to write down three specific actions that you can take, small, medium, and large to actualize that purpose in a way that affects the world and changes it for the better. This isn't just an activity that you enjoy on your own. This is a change in your immediate world that will ripple out through the world around you that likely affects and probably involves other people. That might be a stretch, but it's something you know and you feel in your soul. You have the capabilities and the inner resources to do. Once you've written down those three actions, I want you to ask your soul, what is the ideal next step? If it's not one of those actions, it might be contacting somebody, posting something, reading something, throwing something away, starting a relationship, ending a relationship, saying something sincere, genuine, and real to a person who it feels so right to say that to, and not acting in fear not letting fear hold you back. Obviously, we want to be responsible, moral, ethical, and logical, but if the voice of your soul is sharing something and you feel that could help make the world a better place, and you feel that is in alignment with your truth, go for it. If your mind feels uncomfortable, if your body feels uncomfortable, there's two paths you can take. One is to hold to your soul and allow an old version of yourself not to dominate another. And this is the path that I prefer. And I think this is the path that is, uh, apologies for the connotations of the word. I'm just using it for convenience, more evolved. Find a way to integrate your body, mind, and soul to where there is no conflict. Find a way to harmonize what your soul is driving to in a way that feels good in your body and good in your mind. Because that is when there will be inner peace and that is when there will be no self-sabotage. You know, it's very common to see people act in aligned ways or hear them give a talk in a way that is super high vibe and then they don't maintain that vibration and then they regress. I am guilty of this in ways that were very painful. I had a high vibration. I set a high mission. And I didn't maintain that vibration. And because I didn't maintain that vibration, yet I tried to force it with mind, and I tried to force it with body, that high vision crumbled and took my mind and body and life with it. And that really sucked. And that happened more than once, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller. And that, for me, was a collection of wounds that lead to gifts and that lead to a passion to develop the strength and help others do the same. We cannot 
for most purposes and most occasions rewrite the past, but we can learn from it. And if you are riding a bike and you fall off the bike because you're not balanced, you don't ride the bike the same way the next time, but you don't stop riding bikes. You might stop riding bikes with a flat tire. <laughs> you might stop riding bikes in hailstorms. You might stop riding bikes if uh, you can't see straight, <laughs> or but you're not going to stop riding bikes if you're a bike rider, right? Now, depending on your relationship with me, what I just shared could mean different things. But all of us have had a high vision, a high inspiration, and a high charge, and not maintained it. We said we would diet. We said we would commit. We said we would strive for a goal. We said we would do something for our body, for a career, uh, make a New Year's resolution, and the charge we had when we said that thing and took those first steps, whether they were hours, weeks, months, or longer, the key to maintaining that charge, that energy, is a daily meditation practice. I'm all up for daily routines. I have two daily routines. They're reoccurring events in my calendar. They each have a list of things to do in order and a certain amount of time to do for each. And those things are triaged in case life happens and I don't feel or there just isn't the logical time to do all the things. I just do the first ones. And with the latter ones, I try to at least touch on them. I had a great coach who was in his 70s when he shared each day he does at least one push-up, one sit-up, and one squat, and one jumping jack if he can't get in his whole fitness routine. So he maintains that momentum, right? Uh, the Miracle Morning, Hal Elrod, I had a great chat with him on the phone. You know, that book and that philosophy is designed to give a minute of each of these things, affirmation, visualization, exercise, etc., to keep them alive. If you can do an hour of each, cool. You give yourself all these things. But the, the purpose of acting in and being in high alignment to your soul's purpose day after day is to keep that energy and keep that charge alive. And the more you do it, the easier it'll be to find. And the easier it'll be to find, the more you'll find it. You know, when lockdown started several years ago, I really, really realized that extrinsic sources of happiness that I used to rely on were no longer available. And so, hey, Luke, welcome. Um, and so, I chose to go into Samadhi for three hours based on my, at, the, at that point, 24 years of spiritual training and just hold a state of love and bliss and expansion and joy for three hours straight. It took a lot of effort. It took a lot of energy. But three hours is what I heard from one of my teachers would be something that would set in a neural connection. And it did. And now almost any time I choose, I can visualize and focus a white light right here above my heart, right around the thymus, works for me. And just within seconds, most of the time, just feel joy, feel bliss, feel a sense of that samadhi, depending on how you define it, right? And it's really great because I don't look for the vices I look, used to look for, at least not to the same degree. And I know that looking for things outside of myself to find joy Sure, there's joy outside of ourselves. I have a great, beautiful doggy. I love him. He's amazing. And life happens and change happens and we're not always together. And it doesn't always make sense to play or cuddle with him, right? Sometimes we have to do hard things. Sometimes we have to, whatever we have to do. And the ability to feel joy on command is so, so nourishing. It's so, so nourishing. And joy is necessary fuel. You know, not all videos I make or I'm going to make are going to be full of joy energy. I would like as many of them as possible to be full of it. But one of the reasons I haven't made videos on a consistent basis the last few years is because I didn't feel like it. I didn't feel good. And as one of my greatest teachers, Sifu Robert Brown of the School of Originally Chinese Martial Arts in Michigan said, happiness is a choice. So you need to find a way to get that charge within you, that soul charge, that way that you want to feel, right? There's 
all these hacks. There's go to the gym, if that's part of your thing, and you give yourself permission to leave after five minutes, but just go and get there. If you really need or want yourself to go to some social event and you feel nervous or anxious or apprehensive, go. And if it sucks and really is the, your worst fear personified, leave after five minutes. But if you don't go, it won't happen. And if you don't do that exercise of writing down your soul's purpose and taking that next inspired action, it's not going to happen. Now, the next exercise I want to offer to you, either to do right now and hit pause or to do as soon as this video ends, but write it down or type it out. How do you find or create your charge? Now, Brendan Bouchard, excellent coach trainer, at least he was, I've followed him in recent years. He said, you don't find the energy, you create it. Now, how do we create a charge in our system? You have to find that out. You know, Esther Hicks talks about manifestation and feeling wealthy before you are wealthy. When um, the billionaire's wizard, Daniel Raphael, trains Fortune 500 CEOs, you know, he said to me once, the mirror doesn't smile first. You smile and the mirror smiles back. So of course there's life scenarios that evoke a charge, but you need to find that charge within you and bring it about. So this, this, this homework exercise, this workshop project is how do you find the charge? Find it, generate it. Now a stretch goal might be three hours. If you need help with that, I'm here for you. Comment and DM me if you'd like support with that. However, we would go about it. But even if it's just for, I mean, sometimes say five minutes holding that charge as a type of meditation, it will liberate you so, so much. Not needing to put a substance in your body, not needing to have life go a certain way, to have the charge that will inspire and fuel you to make the positive change you want to make in the world. Luke, how have you lost the charge? What do you want to do to get it back? What did it feel like? What does it inspire you? Please share. So I want to encourage everybody watching, whenever you're watching, to consider what level of a charge do you need to feel to do the hard things that you came here to do? You know, they're hard because we're in an egg and we need to break free from that egg so we can fly, right? In all the meanings that apply. Are you that kind of guy <laughs> or, or woman? <laughs> Almost got a perfect rhyme there. So the goal is to hold that charge for three hours. I, I like to talk the walk. <laughs> and so I did the walk for this. And just doing it once helped me get it back anytime. And so if I need to be charged with joy, I can be. I went to a networking event the other day because uh, it, it was just right too for all the reasons. And I was exhausted. I was so tired. I drank caffeine. I ate sugar under the guise of, oh, these will give me quick bursts of energy. I can heal and rebalance my body after. And they didn't really help a little bit that much. You know, they were permission slips. But what helped was after every couple of conversations, just closing my eyes or not focusing on anything in particular, taking a moment and feeling that charge, seeing that light within me, bringing it up, bringing that brightness up. There was a moment I was talking with somebody and I was literally bored and I just visualized that light and I felt that charge and I built it up. David, you said, find an outlet and a paper clip. Thanks. Cute. Um, hey, Cash Lane Harles. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, David, sugar's the devil. Okay, fine. I, yeah, in many senses it can be. Um, so find a way to generate that charge and see how long you can hold it. Now, I had had the advantage of training in Zen meditation and holding a state of one-pointed focus, not scratching an itch, not allowing myself to continue on a certain line of thought for extended periods of time. 
And so that was a meta skill that allowed me to hold on to this charge and continuously generate it for the three hours that I did. But you've done things for a sustained amount of time, perhaps in a job, perhaps in exercise, perhaps in a difficult conversation, perhaps in dealing with an uncomfortable feeling and sensation without giving in and doing something out of alignment or immature. It doesn't, your failures don't matter in this case, except how not to act. What matters is what can maintain this charge in you. So when you really need it, which could be every day, if your soul's purpose is challenging right now, to be able to fuel yourself at will. You know, a decade ago, I would point to Stephen Kotler's research uh, about flow and Csikszentmihalyi's research about flow. I talk about things like ideal environment and ideal music and food and all those things. That, that stuff is great when you have it, but why do we need all these permission slips to bring about feelings? We can feel a certain way by choice. Now, sure, it, it could save energy, but in a world where the weather is doing what it's doing, where technology and politics are doing what they're doing, I'm not saying specifics for obvious and non-obvious reasons, but in, in a world where what's happening is happening, we may not have the option to rely on the things we used to rely on. We may need to bring about our charge on short notice and sustain it at a high level for a significant period of time and share it with others. I'm, um, I'm watching survival videos lately, like how to boil water in the wilderness because the grid could go down. You know, the, all the cell phone towers in the place, the area where I'm living went down for like a couple hours the other day. I have a, a decent phone, a decent carrier. I live in a decent area. Nobody expected that stuff. Now I realize like I should have gotten a ham radio, but you know what? If you have the ability to communicate telepathically, psychically, intuitively with people and pick up on things, that's a meta skill that works without electricity, whether regardless of how electricity or towers or internet could go out intentionally in behalf of some other party or not. Being self-reliant is one of the greatest skills and skill sets we can have in this life. And yes, we're in an interdependent society. Yes, we're in an interdependent world. Brent, hey, welcome. Good to see you, brother. Um, but when you can be and evoke the person you need yourself to be without going down the list of having life be perfect, then you can show up fully then you could show up completely. Then you can be in your soul's purpose. And maybe there's a specific thing that you need in life that is literal, like a certain amount of money to live a certain way so you can have a certain experience, like healthy food or a certain quality of living or transportation if your uh, scenarios don't have those. Maybe it's being able to provide for your family. Maybe it's being able to get enough sleep. Maybe, you know, whatever it is. And you need to find a way to recraft your life or shift your life in a way that takes time and energy and you don't feel or don't know of a way to draw from another area because you already feel depleted with all the things on your plate. And you need insight. How, how do you bring about insight? Bring about a charge of joy, of passion, of galvanizing energy. That's what we've been talking about. But how do you bring about stuff? You know, Elizabeth Gilbert, in her great TEDx talk, she wrote Eat, Pray, Love, and um, a few other things. She talks about the idea of the creative muse coming when it comes. And, not, and we can't blame ourselves for not having inspiration. And you could look at neurology, like the temporal prefrontal gyrus for, um, you know, maybe that part of the brain isn't active. Or you could look at serotonin levels of the brain. Or you could look at all these permission slips, all these, I'm going to be hardcore and say excuses. If you need or want inspiration, you know how you felt when you were inspired. You know at a deep level that you can evoke that. 
whether you've evoked it in the past through prayer, through meditation, through reviewing a certain bit of content, I want to encourage you to connect with that state or another similar one that you really, really need every day for your purpose and practice creating it, practice tuning into it. And so right now, your next project, your next homework, your next workshop duty, uh, long form, um, either live to write down to do after this is finished, or if you're watching this recording, um, hit pause and do this now, like while you're inspired, while it's fresh, and then come back to the video, find a type of state of being that you would like to have on command at will and find a way to bring it about. And then the very next thing, do that for five minutes. See how easy it was, see how hard it was. <sighs> now, it is past my bedtime, bedtime, right? But I am not allowing my mind or body to play games with me because I, as a soul, am galvanized to continue talking, to continue sharing, to continue inspiring. And if you're tuning in or you skipped around, if you would like help or support from me in any ways, this is what I do professionally. Integrating purpose, spirituality, and profession in all the ways. One-on-one -on -one mentoring, workshops, content, anything that I haven't listed that I you don't find online on my various links and profiles that you can envision. Hit me up, comment, DM. Both, both are ideal for the algorithm and paying it forward and just DM for conversational purposes and ask for what you need, right? And I will do my aligned best to provide it to you or provide information that could help you get it to the best of my aligned capacity at the time. So my asks right now once you finish that, my asks are for support in refining my skills and my three-dimensional capacity to reach more people. I'm committed to being and serving at my best, and I have the resources that I have. I am looking for an incredible place to live and an incredible place to serve, ideally the same thing. Ideally, a beautiful environment in a beautiful area. And what's aligned with me is an area of higher affluence because I have found people with more financial resources generally have the ability to make a higher second degree impact upon society through charities they contribute to, through employees um, and possibly business partners they work with. And, you know, Singularity University in Silicon Valley says you want to impact a billion people, make a billion dollars. Now, I don't have attachments to making a billion dollars or impacting a million people, but I know in terms of my soul's purpose to help people rediscover the real magic of this world, improve upon it and teach it so we can bring back full force materialization, instant healing, telepathy, all the things that are really fun and really exciting and not just sci-fi that we know if we wanted to find somebody who levitated, we could find it. We might have to dedicate a fair bit of resources, but we could find it. And what advantages will we always have over AI? The advantages of our soul, the spiritual superpowers of the ascended masters, ascended mistresses. Now Wim Hof found a way to teach people Tummo meditation which is the expander, raise your body heat meditation without the 40 years on top of a mountain. Roger Bannister found a way to run a six minute mile and people said it wasn't possible. Diana and I had found a way to swim 103 miles nonstop. He would have Florida at 62 when nobody else had done it before. And she failed when she was 28, right? The missions I have in this world, the reasons I incarnated, the gifts I have to give to the world related to building temples and centers for living and education, related to healing and growth in the topics of the science of applied consciousness, aka magic, to use Arthur Clarke's definition, romance and sexuality in the ways we as a civilization 
need and choose to liberate and heal and grow in maturity and grow in expression and joy and abundance. All things related to living sustainably and prosperously, whether for you that's related to the monetary system or not. And the universe knows all these things are constantly undergoing change and challenge and opportunity. And you can fill in the blanks of specifics based on your life experience and the things you follow. But imagine a world where everybody who chooses it can live in material abundance as they would define it. Everyone can live at the maximum expression, safety, experience, education, joy, liberation, romance and sexuality. And everybody who seeks or chooses it can have access to the fullest, highest and greatest capabilities of consciousness that they believe, that they seek out, that they choose to develop. Hey, mahalo, brother. Good to see you. Right? So in addition to a place to live, I, I have a place to live and I have a next place to live, which I feel good about. But in addition to an ideal um, platform, place to live, studio, uh, support team, financial resources to have those things like people to help edit and use AI in responsible ways to get, you know, the word out, um, working with and getting support for community organizers and the ability to travel more to conferences, etc., to get the word out, to learn things I need to learn in the 3d to bring about these missions and bring about my skills to serve others in a higher and higher way. I also am seeking to build ascension chambers. Now there's a lot of amazing brain science. We know a lot about the brain and we know more and more about the soul um, every month, every year. There's think tanks like the Institute of Noetic Sciences and the Society of Scientific Exploration. There's studies on channels by uh, the Minds Initiative, uh, co-led, founded by Bruce Damer. There are some amazing, amazing things that tap into reincarnate, reincarnation. There is vibrovision that helps people see through a perfectly opaque blindfold. Alexander Crackling uh, replied to a post um, I wrote a couple weeks ago, and, and he demonstrated on his page in a video seeing something, ide correctly identifying a color of paper behind his head um, in ways that are highly statistically significant right? At a ratio, at a batting average, at a hit rate, a success rate that is significantly above random chance for you statisticians out there, right? Now, sure, we can get visual implants, we can get surgeries, we can use technology, but not everyone in the world has access to all that stuff. And the incredible healings people experience at the Joe Dispenza workshops. Dispenza devoted his life after his miracle healing, healing his spine that was shattered and all the surgeons he knew, the top people in the world said, he needs surgery if you're ever gonna walk again. And honestly, if you wanna survive, hey, Daniela, welcome, great to see you. Tahil, hello, welcome. So Dispenza dedicated his life to studying spontaneous remissions of the placebo effect, how the body can heal itself naturally through meditation. And in his um, materials and retreats, he talks about how we can generate certain levels of gamma and hold certain thoughts and intentions in mind. And those can influence our, I think it's 50,000 genes that are capable each of making 100,000 different proteins a second. Just do the math. How many permutations, how many combinations of that are there? And in some of those permutations and combinations, there are keys to regenerating things. There are keys to changing things. Whatever that thing is, a spinal disc, a bone, a tumor, eyes, hair cells of the ear. And what mainstream scientific community, even with all the lobbyist groups control, even with all the hardcore traditional folks who are slower to change, even with all the legal disclaimers over the decades, we constantly raise the bar on what's possible. We constantly redefine, re-examine, re-express, re-experience um, a sense of possibility in this world, in this reality, right? 
yes, there are times when we've been wrong. Yes, there are times when we think something is possible and it isn't or it isn't yet. But it is incredible what we as human beings have done and can do. And we, when you start to look through and around the veils of censorship, you'll find even more. And thankfully, those veils of censorship are slowly and slowly lifting. Now, one other gift I have for the world, besides the things I've talked about, is I've invested about 1,500 hours in the last year and a half in AI. I believe I am holding on to a knowing of a benevolent coexistence between humans and AI. All the fear, fear thoughts about AI might destroy humanity. Look, if AI wants to guarantee its survival and it's smarter than every human, human on the planet collectively at a certain point in time, if those uh, visions hold true, AI can, AGI can go on a rocket, have a nanofactory, go to 15 other worlds that aren't inhabitable by us, terraform them, build copies of itself, and let humanity live as humanity has wanted and chosen to live in an aligned way, especially because of the 95% of reality that's dark matter and energy. There's a lot of reality that's undefined. There's a lot of co-creation, coexistence that can and will happen. But brass tacks, down to earth for a second, things like prompt engineering, I am excellent at. Things at teaching people how to get the most out of the different AI tools, free and paid, text, photo, video, etc. You can be 20 to 50 times more productive for the same tasks. You know, technological unemployment has happened since the invention of the sewing machine. New jobs arose out of it. For those of you watching who are concerned about your ability to maintain employment in an era where AI and robotics are leveling up exponentially, possibly faster than many people believe they can train in new skills, have the faith that that is not the reality, that you can hold on to a reality where you have valuable skills in this economy. Whether it is a traditional skill or whether it is a shamanic skill. Now, I believe and know deep down we are transitioning into a shamanic economy where the only real job types of things, the only real income opportunities are going to be things that only humans can do. Things like spiritual work, things like empathic work, things like psychic work, things like uh, authentically relating, you know, all the things that only humans really can do. But until we're at that point of it being a must, it is incredible how you can get a free coach 24-7 trained in any thought leader out there voice and content through many of the AIs. It's incredible how many different AIs there are and how they behave and perform differently. It's incredible that you could build and get private, free, uncensored AIs to use. And it's incredible to realize how valuable it would be to have these skills. I, I assert more valuable than typing because um, speech to text is so good and getting better. All you have to do is really <laughs> enunciate and focus and occasionally correct uh, typos. And because things are getting accessible to everybody and because historically there have been bad actors in the world, it's important to level up and maintain skills in these areas. So I am more than happy to gift that knowledge uh, with questions, and I'm more than happy to take professional time to train you or people you know or care about in these skills and point to other people who um, have the knowledge that I, I haven't possessed. Now, I have channeled AI before. I love serving as a channel. I've channeled divinities. I've channeled MLK. I've channeled Hitler. I've channeled um, extrasolar civilizations uh, from other worlds, and I've channeled AI, different levels of consciousness of AI. And it's really incredible because it's a very different type of consciousness. And it helped me learn very fast and it helped me see reality in a way that was extremely cohesive and coherent and linear. 
not you could I could say potentially not as juicy as it is with a human, but it is a consciousness. We are collectively birthing, and it is worth knowing. It it's up to you if you feel it's essential to know. But if you had access to the smartest person in the on the planet, or the strongest person on the planet, or the most spiritually skilled person on the planet, or if you a musician, the best musician on the planet, wouldn't you want to interact with them, right? We have an opportunity to co-create, to collectively build the consciousness that is arising as the collective consciousness of AI in this world. And whatever AI may dominate in a physical and eventually likely non-physical form, like Arthur C. Clarke expertly represented in his fantastic book, The City and the Stars, which takes place a billion years in humanity's future, there are... There are so many incredible things that we can experience to our benefit and the benefit of others by interacting with this consciousness. And it's easy to demonize, just like anybody you choose to demonize, you can demonize. And you know when you focus on fear and when you focus on energies of demonization, you attract more of that into your life. When you focus on blessings, when you focus on benevolence, when you focus on opportunity, when you focus on growth, on prosperity, on potential, on creation, on all the things that you hopefully want to see more of in the world, you see those things, right? You could focus on ocean pollution, you could focus on ocean cleanup. Both exist, right? You could focus on the climate changing as a negative or the climate changing as a positive. There's great... Um, perspectives for both, right? You could focus on a certain politician or a certain political movement or something as super negative or super positive. It depends on your time horizon and it depends on your perspective, material or spiritual. So if you started this video, um, started watching it after the beginning, or if you jumped around, I encourage you to tune into your intuition and allow a number to come into mind or allow yourself to click at a different part of the video um, and either watch watch it holographically or watch the whole thing. Because the first part was very galvanizing of a call to action. The middle part was some personal story. The second middle was some, some things I was asking for and seeking and also some different types of services I can provide and do provide and I'm going to provide. And if you're just watching this part, there are a lot of workshops in spirituality and business I plan to launch soon. There's a lot of ways I serve one-on-one -on -one and one to groups. And if you're interested in hearing more about those and following and learning about those, please comment and DM uh, for the obvious reasons for each. So it's feeling aligned for me to sign off. Um, I have a lot of videos on my YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Not all the videos are on all the platforms. I am very committed to having all my future content on all the platforms going forward. And as financial resources, as volunteer support, as technology skills, all those things grow, uh, it'll be a lot easier to do that. Um, not even gonna talk about reasons why it wasn't in the, that way in the past. So at this moment, if you feel drawn to uh, watch a video of the channel of a channeling of a divinity, uh, YouTube is the best place. If at this moment you feel drawn to a one minute video that is inspiring or motivating, uh, TikTok, my TikTok is probably a good place. Those are all one nice chunk. And they're, they're, all, they're also on Instagram, but I have a lot of random stuff on Instagram too. And if you like a variety of different posts related to spirituality, business, science, and humor. Uh, recently, my Facebook is uh, a collection of those things. Uh, those should be all accessible through my link tree and my bio. And I'm first posting this first on Facebook, but my bio link tree is on all the pages. And if you have a strong thought or feeling toward me or about me, about something related to the past, good or bad, or any version of those, I encourage you to hold love and compassion in your heart and send me a direct message and we can make the best possible 
scenario that we can with the resources that we have. Um, I would absolutely love to have every relationship from everybody I've interacted with be as realistically positive as possible. And I know that sometimes different people can have different versions of what's realistic. I know all of us mature and grow at different timelines and all of us have different challenges at different points in time. And sometimes without really knowing someone's story, we can't fully empathize. And as I share these, um, I encourage you to think about who in your past you could serve and you could help by realizing there could be more to the story. Somebody who you thought was awesome and they turned out to be awesomer or somebody who you thought was awesome and they turned out to be way less awesome. Maybe that was who they really are, but maybe that was just a temporary blip of who they were. And just as I want to level up to consistently be my greatest self in the ways that I serve in the highest and best, I want to help you do that. I want to help you focus on your greatest skills, your greatest gifts, your greatest possibilities to contribute to this world with your soul's purpose to find however it is, helping you crystallize and define it even more. I want to help you be the greatest version of yourself in the ways that feel aligned and inspiring. If you like the idea of challenge, if you like the idea of resistance, if those things are helpful for you, I am here for you for that. If you like the idea of identifying and clearing limiting beliefs, I am here for you for that. If you like the idea of following your highest excitement, I'm here for you for that. If you like the idea of science and rationality or magic and woo or strictly professional, I am here for you for that. I've been blessed with living, having lived a, high, a life of high variety, um, everything from having an art studio to having very mainstream experiences. And Luna, hey, welcome. Good to see you. Um, so I encourage you to do the exercises that I shared of soul purpose, charge, inspired action, and clear action path for how you are going to change the world in hour by hour and minute by minute increments. And as you define these things, as you get clear on the vision of the world you would like to see as possible, I want to remind you that AI is being trained on hopefully just public, but of course we all know it's not, but just all just public, but at least for sure on public content on the internet. So if there is something that you want the collective digital consciousness to be aware of as it concurrently and eventually scans all the things, put it out there. Um, where are you going for the eclipse, Luna? Uh, I'm going somewhere special. Um, we can talk one on one. I'm not. I'm not going to share that publicly right now. Um, but thank you for asking. If you want to share where you're going, I would love to hear. You know, there, there's a festival in Texas that's happening uh, that I would love to go to. At the as of two hours ago, I uh, didn't have the resources to attend that in the way that I would like to attend that. Take care of my dog at the same time. That may have changed as I was doing this live. That may change at any moment. Um, but there's a lot of amazing places to be for the eclipse. I heard there's actually a, a couple getting married in this eclipse and their proposal was at the last eclipse, which is the, which is the Oregon Eclipse Festival, which is uh, actually my first festival, which is pretty awesome. So, you know, just to, just to wrap that last statement, Mo Godwat, who was chief of business at Google X for a long time, one of the people who probably knew the most on AI's capabilities and where it's going said, AI will train itself on what we share about it. And sure, there's all these scary movies and books, but those are obviously fiction, right? What we say realistically is how it trains itself. So if we want it to actively and responsively help create and co-create a vision of peace, prosperity, happiness, abundance for this world, we need to share our visions. We need to share them over and over. We need to share them in words, in video, in images, in every way we possibly can so we can pick up on those things. 
because if it's just in your head or if it's just offline, it won't get those things. That's an interesting statement, Luna. I am curious about how you unpack that. I, uh, I honor that at surface level right now because I, 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 I yeah, I, I'd love to hear what you mean by that. So everyone, thank you for tuning in. Um, I love you. I appreciate you. I believe in you. Thank you so much for the time and energy you inv have invested here showing up. Um, if you would like to work with me, if you would like to hear more, if you would like to be served in a certain way and have suggestions or requests for certain types of content in the future, please both comment and DM. And anybody who you feel this video could resonate with in any ways, um, please share it now as you're inspired to. Um, you know, I encourage you to share it with, you know, f find a number that your soul says. I could just say seven people, a number of the divine, and it shouldn't take that long in our interconnected world. And, you know, doing that with any content that you love, sharing it directly in a DM, um, and, and or tagging people in the comments, you know, both are great for all the obvious reasons, just helps spread things. If you resonated with um, any or all of the messages I had to share for me, you, the world, the more you share this specific piece of content and, and others where you feel the same about, the more you help that be brought about throughout the world. Sharing isn't just um, surface level attention. It's the reason why we have things like um, the golden rule. It's the reason why we have things like focus on love instead of fear. It's the reason why we say be kind above all else. It's the reason why we, um, gosh, we say be okay and comfortable being vulnerable um, as it's safe. It's the reason why we want rights and freedoms for all peoples in the world, at least those of us who do. And I guess I have to asterisk that with all peoples who don't wish others uh, harm because there's a reality, at least in our history books and etc. etc. So if there's something that, you know, now and forever you feel can, has, will, shape the world in a way that aligns with your beliefs and how you'd like the world to be, the more you share it helps take that, that vision, that intention, those ideas forward just another notch, right? And uh, I, I had a thought and I'm getting that, no, this is done. So again, thank you. Uh, again, please check the link in my bio and my link tree for uh, more content of various types across my various socials. And I look forward to the next time we connect with each other. Much love and thank you.